let's use Packet Tracer to demonstrate the Spanning Tree Protocol, or STP. In networks, it's often beneficial to have a redundant network design, to have redundant switches in a network. And that's what we have here. We have this redundant network design where we have these layer two switches. And you've got this switch here, which creates two paths for what the way traffic could travel. So if PC0 wants to go to PC1, it looks like the traffic could go this way, or it looks like the traffic could go this way. Now this is great because it adds redundancy to the network. In other words, if one link goes down, you have another pathway to get there. However, having a redundant design like this with redundant links creates oftentimes loops in the network. So that's where traffic could go around the network and come back the way it came. And that's a problem, especially when you have broadcasts. Both layer two and layer three broadcasts could circle around this network endlessly and create what's called a broadcast storm. So redundant network design is great. Having redundant switches and multiple pathways is great, but you have to protect against loops in the network and the possibility of broadcast storms. So that's what Spanning Tree Protocol does. And in this situation, it has taken this port right here, port Fast Ethernet 02 on S3, and it's put it into blocking mode. You can tell because it has this orange light. So right now, there's no longer two ways for traffic to travel. Traffic is going to go from PC0 to S3 to S1 to S2, and then over here to PC1. So traffic will travel this way. And if if it's a broadcast and it tries to circle around the way it came, it's going to get blocked because this link is down, this port is down, taking this essentially this link down. So that's what's happened right here. So Spanning Tree Protocol has shut down and put this switch port into blocking mode, and it's done it dynamically. So what that means is the switches are talking to each other using the Spanning Tree Protocol, and if necessary, they could reactivate, Spanning Tree Protocol could reactivate this port. Right now it's in a blocking state. These are the states for STP. And if if this link was to go down, this one would come back up, sort of like this. If I take down this link right here, you'll see if I fast forward time, this link comes back up. Now if I put the link back, cable from port 3 to switch port 3, and I fast forward time, this switch port returns to blocking mode. Now, how does this function? The spanning tree protocol functions by electing a root bridge. So the way the protocol works is the switches talk to each other and they exchange bridge protocol data units or BPDUs. They send hello packets essentially to each other every two seconds. And when they, they send their information to each other and that information is used to elect a root bridge or a boss switch. So right now S1 is the boss switch, it's the root bridge. The reason is it has the lowest bridge ID. Now the bridge ID is a combination in this case, since these are Cisco switches, of bridge priority number, the system ID extension, which is the VLAN number, and then the MAC address. And whatever is the lowest, and if this is default, and this is default, and everybody has a 32768 bridge priority number, and everyone has a VLAN 1 system ID extension, then the switch with the lowest MAC address will be the root bridge. And now the other switches have to find the best path through the network to reach the root bridge. So as you can see, this port is shut down, and notice this link is the farthest link away from the root bridge. In other words, this link is connected to the root bridge, and this link is connected to the root bridge, but this one is the farthest away, and so this was the port that was shut down. Now, why was this port shut down instead of this port? Well, probably because S3 has the highest MAC address, and so it probably has the worst bridge ID, and so all things being equal, these are all fast Ethernet links. This was the port that was shut down, probably because S3 has the, um, the highest or the worst bridge ID. So when we have spanning tree protocol, we can label these ports. So right now, this port is a designated port. The ports coming off of the root bridge are designated ports. And the best port to reach the root bridge is known as the root port. So that's a root port on S2. This is a root port. And then this is what we call a non-designated port. And this is a designated port. So we have the port assignments here in spanning tree protocol essentially assigns these ports their function. 
And that's how we have this situation. Now there's different types of spanning tree protocol. The original standard, STP 8021D, and then Cisco uses per VLAN spanning tree protocol. It's known as PVST+. So right now there's a spanning tree on VLAN 1, and in this network, we're actually not using STP since it's Cisco switches, we're using PVST+, and so there would be a spanning tree for each VLAN if we had multiple VLANs. And then today, most networks use what's known as rapid spanning tree protocol, which is a lot faster in the way the switches uh, bring their switch ports from a down blocking state to a forwarding state. And that is rapid spanning tree protocol is 802.1w. And for Cisco, we have uh, rapid per VLAN spanning tree protocol. So we have uh, R, uh, PVRST, or per VLAN rapid spanning tree protocol. Now let's see what happens if you don't have spanning tree protocol in the network. So right now, we'll take a look. I'll go to simulation mode, and I've already got it set to just show ICMP and STP, the STP packets. But let's just say we want to only see right now the pings. So I'll get rid of the spanning tree protocol, and we'll just look at pings here. And then I'll set up a ping from PC0 to PC1. And if we examine how the traffic flows, you'll notice there goes the ping, and you can see it takes this pathway to reach PC1. Now this is important. So as this packet or this frame travels throughout the network, S3, if it doesn't know the MAC address of PC0, it learns and puts in its CAM table that PC0's MAC address and associates it with port 10 on the switch. So it learns that MAC address for PC0 is on port 10. And S1 learns that PC0, to get to PC0, PC0 associates with port 3. And S2 learns that PC0 is associated with port 1. So they all have, uh, they've all seen PC0's MAC address and they've associated with the port that it learned, they learned on. In the header, that's known as the source MAC address. And then the packet is returned, or the frame is returned, the ping is returned to the device. All right, excellent. Now, let's see what happens if we don't have spanning tree protocol, which could end up in problems on the network. So what I'll do is I'll go back to real-time mode, and I'm gonna go into these switches to the command line interface, and we'll go into global config mode, and I'll say no span, no spanning tree VLAN one. And I'm basically going to put that command in on each of the switches. So we'll go in here, command line interface, enable, conf t gets global config mode, paste, and I'm turning off the spanning tree protocol in all three switches. And paste. All right, so now I've shut off the spanning tree protocol on all three switches. Notice that port two is no longer in a blocking state because there's no spanning tree protocol. They're not exchanging BPDUs. There's no longer a root bridge. There's no longer a blocking state here. So now all pathways are open. So now we're going to ping from PC0 to PC1 again and see what happens. So I'll go here. And maybe I'll clear this. I want a new um, scenario here. So there we go. Fresh scenario, PC0 to PC1, and we'll see what happens. We see as traffic hits the switch, notice that traffic goes both ways. So that's curious. So traffic went both ways. So now S1 learns that PC0 is on this uh, port, port three, and now S2 learns that PC0 is on port two. However, S2 had previously learned that PC0 associated the MAC address of PC0 with port one. So now S2 sees PC0 as, a, as attached to two ports. So it has essentially a MAC address table instability. Let's see what happens as we keep this going. So there goes the packet over here. Notice packets are um, coming back from a previous, previous ping. So notice S1 sent the frame to S2, S2 sent the frame to S1, and things are going to 
loop back around the network. And that's essentially what you have. And you have to remember that with broadcasts, this could be a problem. Let's see here, because notice this ping traveling indefinitely as at layer three, when we're dealing with IP addresses being routed on the internet, the header in the um, a layer three header has a time to live value that gets decremented every hop as it hits every router. However, there is no time to live value in at layer two in the layer two header. So essentially, in other words, this frame on the LAN could circle indefinitely forever and there's no mechanism built in like a time to live value to shut down this, this traffic looping forever on the network. And once again, the source MAC address is being registered on multiple ports on each switch and you have what's called a MAC address table instability. Now, what you can also do is say, all right, well, that was, that was a, a communication from PC0 to PC1. What happens if PC0 is actually sending a broadcast? And if we sent a broadcast, and this could be you know, a layer two or layer three broadcast, depending on ARP sends broadcasts, you can have a situation where the traffic uh, seems to multiply and you can have the same packets arriving, the same traffic arriving at PC1. So having um, duplicate frames reach the PC and is the PC able to process duplicate frames um, and duplicate packets that it wasn't counting on arriving. So that's another problem that can happen. You can see here that we have essentially a broadcast storm happening on the network. Now, once the switches time out and you have MAC addresses time out on the switch ports and you need ARP broadcasts, this broadcast storm could be a lot worse. Okay, notice the green lights here just dancing. And that's what the switch looks like in the middle of a layer two broadcast storm with all the lights on the switch port just blinking incessantly. So to fix this problem, we're going to turn spanning tree protocol back on in global config mode and that should remove the problem all right we'll do that okay so we've got spanning tree protocol activated again notice everything is all the switches are now communicating with each other trying to elect a root bridge to see which switch has the best bridge ID, which one has the, essentially in this case, the lowest MAC address, since all switches are configured with the same bridge priority number, 32768, and the same system ID extension for VLAN 1. We only have one VLAN, so I'll just fast forward time here, and we'll see that this is the port that ends up being shut down. Okay, so now I wanna add another piece to this. What if, I add another component to the network. So I'm gonna go over here, I'll bring this up, and we add another piece to the network here. This is gonna add a new loop to the network, and that should be um, pretty interesting. So let's see here. We have port one, port two, port three. How about port three to port three here? And how about here? port four to port four here. So this adds a new loop to the network, a big loop out here on this outside, and also a loop right here. And we'll see how what Spanning Tree Protocol does. So Pat, Spanning Tree Protocol has shut down this port right here and shut down. So now it looks like this switch maybe has the worst bridge ID, all things being equal, and all switch ports being fast ethernet, notice there is a port cost for the switch ports. Um, a fast ethernet port gets a uh, port cost of a 19, a switch port cost of 19, whereas a gigabit port has a switch port cost of four. So let's see if we could change this 
election process for specifying which one is the non-designated port, which is right now over here. Let's see, I'm gonna take out this link and I'll replace it with a faster link by connecting gigabit 01 to gigabit 01. And now the port cost for this link, uh, the port cost here is, is more favorable. This is a better pathway. So let's see if that somehow changes the election process. Yep, now notice this switch port is no longer in non-designated blocking mode. It's this switch port that um, no, is the uh, blocking mode because this is the preferred path to get to this device, right? So this is the preferred pathway to go. This one is no longer blocking. And so you have a restructuring of which ports are in the blocking state uh, based on you know, the speed of the link. And you can see here that, let's see, um, if I change this one again, it would, it would change the, the overall uh, design of the network based on the switch port cost. So that's pretty interesting. I've got extra information here related to the states of spanning tree protocol, rapid spanning tree protocol, the uh, root bridge ID, and the BPDUs and how the root bridge is elected. Let's take a quick look at that. If we go into the switch here, the main command you want is show span or show spanning tree or show spanning tree VLAN one. And in this case, if we take a look at it, we'll get some valuable information. So the root bridge, the root ID, the priority number is 32769, which is 32768 plus the system ID extension, which is VLAN 1. So 32768 plus 1 is 32769. And then the MAC address. This is the MAC address of the root bridge. And it says this bridge is the root. That means this switch that we're on right now, this one right here, is the root bridge. It tells you right there. And then notice that the root bridges information is the same as this bridges information. That's because this bridge is the root. Notice same MAC address, same MAC address. Notice that both switch ports are in designated um, mode or designated role status is forwarding and the cost of the ports is 19 because they're fast ethernet links and you have a priority number based on um, the switch port so the switch port default priority number is 128 and this is switch port one and this is switch port three so there you have it then if we take a look at one of the other ones we could compare it to switch three here and we'll see a different different information all right, show span. We take a look at this information. You can see here, there's the root bridge, the boss switch. There's its information. Notice the MAC address, 17A8. That's of S, that's S1 over here. But this switch, which is S3, notice it says S3 here. I didn't configure the host name to S3. However, it's got four switch ports participating. The root port, which is the quickest path or the fastest the best path to the root bridge that's the root port the best pathway to the root bridge it's got port 2 which is an alternate uh, role it's an alternate role in blocking state and then the other ports which are in designated and are in forwarding state so you have and that if we look right here you've got root you have a non-designated and then these are both in designated mode they're both forwarding so anyway, that's spanning tree protocol.